When I came here, four years had passed of an interregnum here because broadly no one wanted to come here because it has a reputation. From the 50s on, it had a, a kind of glorious 20 years. The estate at that time was a place to come to. People rejoiced in coming here out of the terraces down in the valley because they'd come here to a new estate. It was built post-war. They would have front and back gardens, uh, inside bathrooms. So it was the place to come, good to come to Kirkholt. Until broadly the 1970s, that lasted. And then the estate began to change. There's an air of dereliction. There's only one food shop on the estate. Uh, none of the shops virtually will be open, and it's just like a kind of wasteland, and it has that kind of forgotten about feel. And when I came here, people would say, uh, and it's been said to me, no one listens to you if you're here. When I came, even my congregation said to me, you'll never do it. I have to say that, people just said, you're mad, uh, it won't work. No one from the estate will ever come to church and we won't ever get any children again. I did say to them then, I won't hear it, I don't want it, I won't listen to it. We have to be people of hope because if God wills it, God will bring it about. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm very fortunate that I live next to the church. It's meant that people can come to the door and I can get to know people that way. And it has meant that people slowly, slowly have started to come into church. Since we came to this church, it really inspired us a lot to be united and wish to share love around here. And everyone really who comes in this church, it's like we are the family, we are living in the same place. We are all one body in front of God. We really appreciate what's happening here in Kikholt at the moment. If you take away the church, um, then basically there's, as far as myself and my family is concerned, there's just nothing left in this community. It's playing a really big, meaningful and hope-sustaining role as far as we are concerned. I lost my husband uh, two and a half years ago um, and I was just struggling a lot because of block us stopped paying bills and things like that, do you know what I mean? Just burnt my head in the sand. And started coming here, met soon and started coming here. The love, the fact that we're welcome here, makes it, we feel at home. All my past history had been through the forces and everything of what I'd seen and what I'd done. And I felt so scared of what I'd seen. I've been brought up in abusive childhoods where the parents and stuff have been bad and and I thought, well, how can I ever be a different person? How can I ever expect to be a different person? It was amazing to see that you could be accepted for who you was and not be punished. It doesn't matter what you've done wrong. You, you were seen as a human being. Many people will come and will laugh with me and show mutual concern for each other. And yet there's a rawness and an honesty about pain as well, so it's real. And I think God meets us in the realities of our lives and in the death and resurrection of Christ. We see those two realities of joy and seemingly the loss of all things being kind of held together, really. I think what everyone needs to do now is go out and start opening up the minds and coming in to see what it can do for them. I mean, on this estate, you've probably seen yourself have got drug users. We've got people who are an outcast who do wrong, and people who go out fighting. I think what it should be, if it should, people should be coming into the church, or at least bring the children with somebody else to give them a chance to lead a better life than follow their life, because that's what I'm doing it for. Because I was, I was brought up in a bad estate. I was like our leaders on this estate. But now I've got a six-year-old son. I don't want him to be like I was. And I just want the best for him. And if this is the way of doing it, I will do it this way. So I know that his life is going to be a lot better than what mine was.
When Sue first came here, she was saying how everyone was like, oh, there'll never be children in this church. This church will never have children. Oh, every time she mentions it, like, I get little goosebumps and, and I look at David and I do feel like we are the future. Mm. Of coming to, and it's just like a gentle pull to come to St. Thomas's. And, and the, the church is growing. People are coming, new faces, yeah. quite yeah. regular basis now. My hope is one of continued growth. But my hope is that we develop a confidence in the power of the Spirit, I guess, but a confidence to become more flexible so that we do see that it is God and our community as the body of Christ which are our strengths. Together, we, we are aware of our frailty and we're also aware of our need of each other and our need of God.